Alright, hey there YouTube. Welcome back to the FOB. Dr. Yash here. So, as you can probably see from the title, we're going to take a look at the injector that came out of Smokey Joe. So as I stated before in that video where I introduced the project with Smokey Joe, that is a Yanmar L100 clone. So, that makes this a Bosch YDLLA 150P 214, wait, 224B0 clone. So, we'll just call that a Yanmar engine, we'll just call this a Bosch injector. So, because it is the same design, somebody else made it. Um, so this is a mechanical diesel injector. Um, a lot of them look like this. As far as direct injected injectors go, they look a lot like this. Um, a few different ones I've seen, you know, end up looking the same way. So the business end is right here. Of course, that's generally going to be the same with this style of injector. This part is basically what is different on the Yanmar because this is where it interfaces with the cylinder head and the plumbing and all that stuff, and it's the way it attaches. But um, yeah, I've seen other Bosch injectors out of. Uh, like a Volvo Penta uh, turbo diesel marine engine looks exactly the same from here down so and that was a 200 horsepower straight six turbo diesel versus a 10 horsepower 400 cc you know naturally aspirated you know but it's still the injector is pretty much the same and it looks the same internally which is really cool so I'll give you a rundown of how it works on the outside um, before we get into it, so here is where your injection line from your injection pump actually threads onto. You can tell by the threads that it's a lot higher pressure than the return line. The return line is basically just passive, it just needs to flow back to the tank. And we'll get into how that works, where the pressure goes in, and how the return comes out. But your high pressure goes in here, which is about, I looked it up, it was 19.6 megapascals, which is 2842 PSI is the set injection pressure on these. I haven't tested it. I don't know if it's 2800 or higher or lower, but that is the rated pressure for injection on this. So it's pretty high. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it. I'm going to take this uh, this nut off of here. I'll go ahead and show you the inside once we get some of this spring pressure off of it. Do our best not to drop any pieces. There's a few little small parts in here. It's a very simple assembly. Very neat how it works. It is a poppet style um, of a really a poppet style valve inside here. So this is the nozzle itself. This is the nozzle body, and then you have the nozzle needle or pin, depending on which literature you're looking at. I'm actually looking at both Bosch and Yanmar documentation to get an idea. Um, yeah, they're calling this a needle valve, and they're calling this the body. So, it does have, you can't really see it, but there are some very small holes. They are going to be um, 0.22 millimeters. So, let's convert that to inches. No, 0.22. That is, wow, these holes in here are 8.6 eight thousandths of an inch, 0 .0086 repeating thousandths of an inch. They're really small. I can barely see them with my naked eye, so I know you can't see them, but just trust me, where that, where that cone shape is on the end of there, um, there's four holes around the outside of it in a, you know, a, a cross pattern, so... This is actually kind of where the working end of it is. This is actually exposed to the combustion chamber, so it gets a lot of heat. Uh, the original reason I pulled this injector was to get a sample of the carbon deposits inside the chamber. There was plenty. Uh, obviously not enough to be very detrimental to engine operation, because that wasn't the problem with it, but I still wanted to get in there and clean it. I like cleaning carbon deposits. Um, 
about as much as I like doing valve adjustments. So, and for those who don't know, that's I like both of those a lot. Um, very uh, simple things to do that usually re result in a lot of uh, improvement and in engine performance. So, basically, I'm going to get into how this works because this is this is literally what happens inside here. It's I'm oversimplifying it greatly, but you have fuel being pushed in through this hole here, which opens this, and when that opens, it sprays out the end. So, what I'll start with is just showing you the top. So you got two holes here, which are alignment holes for the pins to go in, and then you have where the fuel is pushed through. So you have fuel under pressure. It's always under pressure through here. This only opens when and I'm, it doesn't open that far. It opens a very small amount. But it only opens when the fuel pressure is enough, when the injector, injection pump is pushing enough pressure to actually open it. And we'll get into how that's set and how pressure pushing in here can actually open the valve in just a second. So the pressure going in that small hole, the third hole, actually pushes this out, pushes out here. And what it pushes against when it goes in here is... You can see you have this straight section here, which rides inside the injector body. The rest of it doesn't make any contact except for the very tip of it, where it closes off what's referred to as the sac. It actually closes the sac, which closes the holes, and what most people would call the tip of the nozzle. I don't know who came up with the term sac. It, it, it looks more like a tip, or a nipple, or something like that. So. I don't know what them Germans are thinking, but they're thinking something. So, what you've got here is two points of contact. This is momentary contact, opening and closing, and this is your sliding point. So, the fuel actually enters in this hole here, and there's a reservoir that's a little bigger diameter than the rest of this needle, and it actually pushes against this edge right here. That 2800 PSI pushes back on this needle and unseats the tip of it and that's when it sprays so pretty neat pretty simple uh, obviously it works because they used it for ever I mean there's still engines being produced with that engine with that nozzle type on it too so this is a stop plate so this actually goes over that and you can see it just covers up the tip of the needle there and we'll go ahead and put this together in reverse. So, put those pins in there. So, you can see that doesn't really move up very far, it actually stops. Um, then we have a spring seat that sits right there, and we have a spring. So, now you can see that you have this spring, a very, very strong spring. I can barely push it down with my fingers holding the body. But you have this very strong spring pushing against this needle. That hydraulic pressure of the fuel going down in the reservoir that's around here, this section here, is enough to overcome that spring pressure. So, and uh, then it, you know, of course the spring returns it. So it's, um, it's pretty interesting how a poppet valve works and this isn't the only type of injector to use it. As a matter of fact there are some gasoline engines that have used poppet style injectors. Um, the GM Vortex used those. That was an electronic poppet, electronically controlled poppet valve system. The, the spiders, the ends of the spider legs uh, on the eight cylinders and the insect legs on the six cylinders because uh, spiders have eight legs in case you didn't know that. It's kind of hard to call it a spider on a six cylinder when it's not eight legged, but the ant <laughs> uh, legs are, um, you know, the ends of those, those are poppet valves that work a lot like these. They operate at a much lower pressure though, approximately, what, 50, I think it's a minimum of 55 PSI for those to operate, whereas this is 2842. So, there's supposed to be some shims in here, and you'll actually, what will happen is, to adjust your opening pressure up and down, you'll actually adjust the seat pressure on this spring. So, there's no shims in here, or if there are, 
it looks like there might be a shim in there but it doesn't want to move of course you know when you got fluid down in the bottom such as parts washer solvent it's glued in there because it doesn't weigh enough to flick it out of there but it's just a little washer with a hole in it is effectively what it is it's a little shim with a, enough of a hole to allow the fuel to pass back up to go to the return so this injector actually has a pretty tough life uh, all diesel injectors do or any direct injection direct injection injectors of any type actually do because they're directly exposed to the combustion chamber so all the you know that uh, the needle that moves up and down it's a nice tight fit inside the nozzle body but it's not a perfect fit so the fuel while it's being injected out the end whatever minute amount of leakage that comes up around that leaks around that uh, the needle where it's uh, riding in the injector body that's actually what uh, lubricates the injector the rest of the inner workings in here it actually moves up and goes out the return it also cools the injector because again that's an air-cooled engine and yes it does make contact with the cylinder head but like a spark plug in a gasoline engine this is exposed to the combustion especially right here so all this is getting really hot and so the fuel that's in here this sinks the heat back up the fuel is uh, helping cool it. You have some copper rings here for setting the depth of the injector, but also for allowing the heat to sink into the cylinder head right here at the nut. But between here and here, it's open. There's just air blowing across it, but there's no fins on this. So really, that's not super effective for cooling. Uh, so really, the fuel carries away a lot of the heat that's gathered whenever combustion events occur at the tip of this thing so and then whatever is pushed up around the needle goes up through it goes up through the body of the injector and out the return so that's how you can have a return it's it's really just a controlled leak by the the very tight there are clearances in here but they're very tight but it's just enough to where you have fuel being able to push through there so that's another reason I was looking in here to see if there was any discernible wear because the waste oil that's being burned in this is pushing through all this it's lubricating the entire assembly it's lubricating the injection pump it's lubricating the injector it's cooling all this so if there's a problem with the cooling properties or the lubricity of the fuel it'll cause damage to this so so far I don't see anything which is really cool so I'm really happy with that so far um, I think it's really interesting so anyways hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully that was informative to you of course this really only applies to this style of injector uh, you get into um, mechanical unit injectors hydraulic electric unit injectors you get into common rails this you can throw most of this out the window there's some similarities but they don't work the same this is really the only one that that operates off of pressure going straight into it um, like this so but anyways as far as mechanical direct injected well in IDI engines indirect injected engines also work similarly but at lower pressures and they don't look the same on the end but still really cool stuff I think it's neat really simple and that's probably how it can be 20 bucks if I need to replace it even at that kind of quality like it's actually a very nice machined assembly so um anyways again hopefully you enjoyed that i'm gonna go ahead and jump off of here oh uh, y'all like comment subscribe you know the deal i'll see you next time